I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here with Dyer Supplier to show you how you can dye yarn with Kool-Aid in a slow cooker. This is my slow cooker rice cooker crock pot. It's great at maintaining a low temperature for long periods of time. And they're really also wonderful for dyeing some yarn. Kool-Aid and food coloring based techniques work on protein based yarns, wool, alpaca, silk. Uh, these will not work on cottons or acrylics. Kool-Aid packets are a fantastic way to play around with dyeing yarn with food coloring. Uh, they come as a powder so you can mix them up as concentrated as you want. They don't have any sugar in them yet, unlike some other drink mixes and they have citric acid in them. And the amount of citric acid in these packets is sufficient to dye the yarn. You don't need to have additional vinegar or citric acid for this project. The yarn that we are using today is Dyer Supplier's 7525 sock yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I am laying the pot in a fairly random way. The two ends are close together, but I do want things to be relatively spread out within the pot. We are going to be adding multiple colors to the pot, um, but I don't want to have the level of water be so low that the dye can't really move from where we pour it in. Um, so I'm going to add four cups of plain tap water to our yarn and press the yarn down. Now this yarn is dry. I have not yet pre-soaked it, but since it takes a little while for the pot to come up to temperature, you can pre-soak the yarn in the pot as it is heating up. I am going to turn on the slow cooker on low heat and let it start heating up. Um, I'm gonna wait until it gets pretty warm, either with lots of steam, or maybe we see some hints of bubbles before we add the dye. Let's mix up our colors. We are using six packets of Kool-Aid today. One packet of cherry, two packets of orange, and three packets of lemonade. The reason why I've picked them like this is because cherry is really pigmented, has a lot of color in it. Orange is pretty pigmented as well. Lemonade is less pigmented. Um, and so these are some proportions that I have found with experience work nicely to bring colors up to a similar level. In each of these cups, I have a half cup of tap water, and I will be adding in the Kool-Aid powder from a packet, which again contains the artificial food coloring and citric acid, and then stir it to dissolve. One other perk of dyeing yarn with Kool-Aid powder is that it smells really, really good. I am wearing purple nitrile gloves so that I do not stain uh, my fingers while doing this. If you want to introduce less liquid into your yarn because you really want to keep things um, lower immersion, um, then you can absolutely dissolve this into lower volumes of water using a quarter cup or even an eighth of a cup. There we have it, our three colors of Kool-Aid. After around 30 minutes, the yarn is definitely warm. I can still sort of touch it with a finger. We're not near a boil yet, but I think that we can start adding some color because it's warm enough that some colors, especially the reds, will start striking. There are so many different ways that you could play around with adding the color. I am going to start by making a little pocket on one side and then adding color. I'm adding a fair amount of volume in here. Um, so the color could be spreading beneath the yarn. It could be spreading through. Um, it's up to you whether you want to manipulate things and you know, like sort of help move the colors through or if you want to let the magic of the pot happen. So I'm just sort of making a little pocket, adding that red. And then I'm going to do a final little pocket over here. And you can see some of that red is, is moving. I don't know how much yellow we're going to get around. We might have um, some more orange tones. We might be missing that yellow in our sunset. But that is totally, totally fine and still going to be really beautiful. 
As I said, you could decide to pour the colors on top. I decided to insert it on the side. And it's up to you if you want to move and sort of help some of these tones come through the yarn, or if you want to maybe leave some white and let diffusion do its thing when adding the color. Both of these are perfectly fine options. It's your yarn and you're the one playing with color. For me, one of the best things about dyeing yarn with food coloring is that it is food safe, which means that I can use kitchen equipment and it's a project that I really like to do along with my kids. Kool-Aid packets are great because they have citric acid in them already. We didn't need to add any additional acid into our pot. However, if you would like to uh, play around with this but you can't find Kool-Aid or you want uh, to mix colors with a little more ease, other artificial food coloring works great. Um, just add some vinegar or citric acid to the pot and you can create some amazing results. Before we set this aside to wait, I just want to check in. Oh, looks like, okay, we still have some pinks that have not exhausted, but a lot of the orange and yellow, I think, has struck already. A lot of color has cleared. I don't want to manipulate this, but this does show how quickly colors can start striking the yarn. I am going to recover this and I will come back to check in on the yarn in about 30 minutes. Alright, now 30 minutes later we are still below a simmer. Don't forget that we have the slow cooker on low and our water is looking really clear. When I move the yarn you'll start to see some cloudiness. That's some of the uh, other stuff that is in with our Kool-Aid. But at this stage, gently moving the yarn around a little bit can also help make sure that colors have cleared. If there's significant color when you check on it uh, with a spoon, then you might want to just let it sit for a bit more time. Now I'm going to turn off the slow cooker. And there are two choices at this stage. We could leave the yarn in the pot to cool, which is helpful if there's still trace amount of color that you want it to absorb, or you can remove the yarn, set it aside, and let it cool completely until you wash it. Either way, you want to make sure that the yarn cools completely to room temperature before you go and wash it. Now we are ready to wash our space dyed yarn. Uh, to make sure we rinse out everything. Now, our dye bath is clear, or at least cloudy because of the other stuff in there. But all of the food coloring, all of the color is in our yarn. Um, I'm using cool tap water uh, just to rinse. The best way to avoid any color bleeding is to use cool tap water. Commercial acid dyes and food coloring, which behave the other side mechanism of this acid dye can bleed with warm water. I am now adding some clear dish soap to help wash out everything else that is left in our yarn. Since this is a super wash yarn, I can be a little more vigorous in the washing process. If this were roving or a non super wash feltable wool, I would like to be a little more careful. But um, after a couple more rinses, the yarn is ready to hang up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn that we created with Kool-Aid powder in a crock pot. We dissolved the Kool-Aid in water first and then poured it on to the yarn in the crock pot to add colors to different parts of the yarn. This is a technique that you can play around with in so many ways. And you don't have to use some kind of slow cooker or crock pot. You can use a pot on the stove or a catering chafer dish to spread the yarn out even more. If we had added the yellow to the pot first, then we might have been able to preserve more of those tones. Nevertheless, we have a very happy yarn with multiple shades of orange, red, pink, and white. If you can't find Kool-Aid packets, don't worry. You can use other kinds of liquid or powdered food coloring. There are many options that you can find in the grocery store or at your local craft store. Although I will admit that it is really fun when you find a new to you color of Kool-Aid at a supermarket you don't frequently visit. There are many different ways that you could add a spin on this technique. 
you could pour the yellow dye in first, let it exhaust, then the orange, let it exhaust, followed by the red. This would allow your dyes to mix on the yarn itself instead of in the liquid, so you might see some more distinct colors. Similarly, after the initial round of colors have set, or really before they've set, you can move the yarn around and add more dye. Uh, this is handy if you want to eliminate any white space in your yarn, but I know that I personally find some of the white to be really beautiful and help these other colors pop. Dyeing yarn is an art, and as the artist, you get to set the tone and decide exactly how you want your colors to come out. And as time goes on and you play with color and yarn more and more, you'll find out what techniques you like the best. Due to the way the yarn is added to the pot, there is a randomness to this technique. And so if we had two skeins of yarn in the pot at the same time, they wouldn't be identical. They would be related and you could definitely incorporate them into one product, but you wouldn't want to sort of alternate colors every couple of rows so that way there wouldn't be a clear break when you shifted skeins. If you would like to do some immersion dyeing like this and get more consistent results between multiple skeins, then it's worth looking at a hotel chafer pan because then you can lay out the yarn more and it allows you to create more reproducible variegated colorways. In today's video, we pre-mix the Kool-Aid in some water to dye the yarn. But there is one other really awesome advantage to Kool-Aid. It's a powder and you can use it for speckling. Speckling with the lemonade color doesn't work great, but cherry and grape and orange can give you sharp, beautiful speckles. And it's really worth playing around with. And the slow cooker is a perfect heating source for playing around with that. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you'd like to watch me dye more yarn with Kool-Aid and other types of food coloring, check out the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. You can find a link in the video description. For more beautiful yarn bases like the 75-25 sock yarn we use today, check out Dyer Supplier. They carry many ethically sourced affordable yarn bases in a variety of fiber types and yarn weights, and so you can find the very perfect yarn for your project. And since the yarn is bare, you can create whatever colors you want. It's so much fun. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.